Hey everyone and welcome to another TWM12 video on World of Warships. This one's going to be an interesting one about the battleship Duke of York. Which is a bit of is a bit controversial to be honest with you at the minute. I've seen a lot of good things and bad things about this ship being posted online and honestly some of them are actually true. Is a med is med it's pretty much a debuffed King George V with the, well debuffed guns on the King George V. As you can see 29 second reload instead of 25. The only thing that's really different is the AA. The deep off the guns for pretty much a lot more favorable AA. With an AA rating of at the minute 75, though once I get the last commander skill for that, it should be about 85, which is. Well, actually, it's pretty much the most part. I think it's actually the highest AA rating at tier 7, so it's, it's probably the only thing really going for at the minute. You also notice that's got hydroacoustics. Which is interesting at tier 7 for British battleships. It's only one, actually, other than Hood that gets defensive AA. This is the only other British battleship that gets a second consumable. Due to the sheer fact that British battleships' heels are overpowered as fuck, comparatively. But I think it makes a nice balance since they're all squishy at high tiers anyways. Especially Conqueror. Now, as you can see, 74k damage, 7 fires out of 46 hits. Mm, it's not a lot of fire, put it that way. 46 hits and only 7 fires is a bit of a, well, a bit of a joke to be honest with you. <laughs> a 40% fire rate. I was expecting at least 10 fires, maybe 12. Only got 74k damage, so it's pretty average to be honest with you at the minute. Now you can get some nice matches, especially when you get a carrier like a tier 7 like Kaga. Or Ranger or Haru or any type of carrier with low tier that comes up against you because it's pretty easy Well, it's pretty, pretty easy XP that way as you get plenty of badges for shooting them down if they decide to come near you So there is that as a plus side and you've got Hydro and British HE is very good at killing destroyers So you're a pretty good destroyer hunter and you're pretty good It's role is still the same essentially a destroyer hunter and a cruiser killer. You don't really do too much damage against battleships so not too much point in, ga in engaging them unless they're the last stuff in the game or if you know you can burn them to death. Which I am going to probably die going up against the lion here. As you can see 29 second reload and very slow t t shell travel time. Yes, fire. Only 3k damage though. That's the only issue. As you can see the actual damage amount even with inertia HE with a 30% damage boost to it and well penetration boost is a better way to put it it still lacks a penetration part to do serious damage to battleships as you can see their lion just took our, our fletcher <laughs> and our fletcher just took it out with a devastating strike so <laughs> fair play to it now the Duke of york is actually pretty decent at making credits surprisingly and the game may just have fucked up a wee bit of me there no it hasn't actually 389,000, not actually half bad to be fair to you. Holy shit, I got 11,000 XP. Well, <laughs> I think that's more the Duke of York's experience booster that done that and give me it, but holy shit, that's a lot of fucking XP. 49 hits, 1 shoot down, 5 incapacitations, 3 destroyed, 8 fires, 2 secondary hits. No idea how you got the secondary hits like, but yeah, no idea how. Nothing ever got that close. Let's see. How much XP did I actually? 11,000. We've got 7,000 without my, well, without the actual boost. As you can see, my damage was pretty spread out to be fair to you against all the other battleships and one cruiser. Sorry, two cruisers. Charge Mattel at the start. But a lot of my damage came from pretty much high explosive and fire damage. So, the, it still is high explosive based, this airship. Now, is it worthwhile getting as a free ship? Yeah, it's a free premium that's pretty decent at earning credits, actually. But, would I recommend buying it? No. It's worth earn. It's worth getting for free. That's the best way to put it. It's worth getting it for free. That's the best way to use it. Get it for free, and you shall enjoy it a lot, actually. Is that the task? Oh, got a free, got a free battleship... And the tasks are actually pretty good. You actually get a free free battleships reward collected. You get a free battleship and a free camel with them. Well, I've got more containers to collect, but I've had actually quite a bit of luck with them Christmas containers. I've got Gallant, Indianapolis, Lo Yang, 
They're not too bad, actually, my luck wise, them, but they're doing pretty. I, I quite like them. It's a bit of a form of gambling, but what can you do? Now, the King George. Well, sorry, not King George. Now, compared to King George V, with its 55 AA rating, actually, I can, use, I can just like, do the spec tree here. It's got 47, but it's buffed up to 55, as you can see. King George's artillery is a lot better, but my maneuverability and concealment is a teeny bit better with more solid AA defenses than the King George V. Now, I do wish they would buff the actual reload rate because the 25 second reload rate is, is our, well, it is really bloody needed to fight other battleships effectively, especially when it comes to causing fires. Then 5 seconds make one hell of a bloody difference, especially when you're trying to turn away. And five and five extra seconds being broadside in the turn is a bit in the well. It can hurt. Put it that way. It can hurt a lot <laughs> depending on what you're fighting against. <laughs> Especially if you get up tiered and you have to go up against like a Missouri or something like that there, or an Iowa or a Bismarck. Their guns can be very very hurtful to you because yes you've got decent you've got all around decent armor that are that are very good against cruisers destroyers. And when it's angled correctly, it's great against battleships. But like any warship, once you show the broadside, you are well, you're scundered. Actually, you're screwed. That's it. Bye bye. It's not very forgiving that way, as it doesn't seem to have the same HP repull as a standard British battleship. So you have to be very careful that way. I'm guessing they've done it. The well, the balance are because of hydroacoustics, but I'm also guessing. They done it to see how the British battleships actually play out. Now it's rare my matches average more than forty to eighty k in this year. Eighty two k is most I've ever got. Forty k being about my average in this ship, the fifty k. Though I'm still getting used to it. I've only managed to have it like a day and a half, so I've only had a few games in it. So I'm getting used to its playstyle. It's slightly different than King George V. It's only slightly, and that's because of its reload rate. King George, you can do hit and run with well because if you've got a fast reload rate, you can get in, fire a few shit follies off. This here, you've got to be more, you got to be more conservative and want to do hit and run tactics. Yes, you've got British HC and you do loads of you loads of damage in general, but you still just can't risk it the same. No, is it good? Is it good in general? It's an okay premium. It's not the best. To be honest with you, it's good, but it's not the best. There's better, and that's how it always goes. There's always decent ones. There's always better ones. Come on, waiting for you to stop. Hopefully, they will do some damage to it. Oh, they all overshot by the looks of it. Come on. Come on, let's see this British penetration. Ha! Ah, 4k damage. Come on, let's see a citadel. Let's see a citadel in this next folly. Let's see a citadel in this next folly. Come on. Come on. Nope. Getting closer though. Come on, rear guns. Come around. I will love you for life. But I'm not. As you can see, I'm getting wrecked from the side there. First blood. Still surprised that it can hit me accurately. But thankfully my heal and me not noticing them will solve, will help me recover that there, thankfully. Well I pop my hydro because I've got there I know for a fact there's a DD in that smoke and I want to know where his torpedoes are coming. Now as you can see I was able to well Deflect most of that damage there, and that's set on the folly from the Missouri and the Monarcher. Thank goodness. Uh, that would have probably sunk me actually, if that folly had have been fully broadside again. <laughs> probably have done a lot of severe damage to me. I'm sort of curious what the York's doing. Oh. Four thousand damage from a York. I stand corrected. They must have done. They must have plunged into the deck armor then at that point. But 
but thankfully, yeah, thankfully I managed to get, I managed to be for a bit in the more forgiving side with that there, but we're quite badly outnumbered this time. On this side, we've got Monarch, DeGro, Bjork, Colorado, where there's only Indianapolis and Yugumo here, so we're quite in the, we're quite badly outnumbered. I am detected again, so I wonder what's detecting me this time. Wonder if it's maybe the destroyer. Come on, hit it. Ah, 3,000 damage and just took our torpedo tubes. <laughs> Hopefully that will give our Yugumo some help there at killing it. Hopefully. Yes, Yugumo got it. Well done, Yugumo. Very well done. Let's see. We might actually be able to hold this corner. <laughs> well, that is, that is quite surprising. We might actually be able to hold it. Holy shit. Well, that is surprising. Though, as you can see, my damage is quite low. So, so far, this match has been quite poor. And there's not many ships left, actually, other than the higher tier battleships that will be very hard for me to engage correctly and effectively. Colorado, up front, let's see what I can do to it with my fire damage. By the looks of it, it's actually not going to be moving around. It's decided to encamp itself and hide in that corner, which isn't good. Not good at all, because it means I can't damage it. Come on. Get Folly off in that. Yugumo that has just popped up really damn close to me. I'm going to use the British HE, British HE just to take 3k out of that there. No, 6k was? Holy shit, that was a lot of damage. <laughs> Come on. I'm trying not to go around. I'm, I don't want to go around this corner completely because I know that York has torpedoes, so it's going to be a bit of a well, a death trap for me. But I'm going to try and kite and pull my pull broadside onto him, so his torpedo angles won't be well possible. Hopefully this works, and hopefully I manage to kill it before he drops his torpedoes, or he might drop them early and try and anticipate where I'm going to be. So hopefully he doesn't. Nope, it looks like he hasn't dropped any so far. But it looks like someone else is going to kill him or try and engage him. There we go, but. Oh, 7,000 damage in that broadside. Holy shit. Seven hits, one broken. As you can see, the Anarchy HE is good. On this ship but the fire rate isn't that good because how low the fire chance is and that Colorado just burns to me there which is quite shocking I was expecting to do some devastating damage there in that folly come on 9,000 on that one and I just stripped him of most of his AA Missouri's going down that's a good one 39k as you can see my, my average just so far this game on it. <laughs> Three, four, five, six. Come on. Come on. No. Damn. Let's see what's left. Monarch and a Colorado. Come on, where are you?
I definitely think it's going to sink the Indianapolis. That's for sure. He's going to sink that ship. Well, there's a Colorado. Come on, Colorado. Come on. Turn. I know you're a battleship, but turn. Jesus Christ, you're so slow sometimes. Now, 28 knots is probably one of the... I don't think it's the... I think it's one of the slower battleships, actually. Can, don't think it's as slow as Colorado, but I think it's between the German Nice now and the uh, Nagato. I think it's the second slowest battleship. Or I might be wrong. I think that well third after Nelson maybe. Can't fully remember the, spe the speed specs off my top of my head. I think I think Nelson's maybe twenty four knots. Can't remember. I'll I'll double check that after the match. But anyways, what the well anyways this ship in general. As you can see, it's, it can take a hit. It can survive many engagements of many types in many ways. But at the same time, it's a bit. It is very squishy, very squishy, squishy. And needs to be played with well caution, really. And needs to be taken care of. Wait and see, I'm gonna come out this way here and it's going they're gonna start reversing. But I think that Yugumo's trying to force it out, but I think he's gonna end up getting quite badly hammered by the monarch if yeah he's firing, so he's probably gonna get quite badly hurt. Though it might the Indianapolis is being quite is being quite ballsy, but the Indianapolis could die very easily. Very, very easily. Showing quite a bit of his broadside. Or maybe he's doing it because the Monarch has shown fired its volley off. So it might be, I uh, actually might be safe for him to do so. Holy shit, the Indianapolis actually killed it. Holy fuck. Well, that was a kill steal that was unintentional. <laughs> I was hoping to get actually a decent broadside, but wow, <laughs> he lost that twenty k quite quickly <laughs> compared with three or four. All of us pretty much firing on. As you can see, it's still actually pretty decent this year. Battleship, really? The only issue, my issue is with it is its guns. Its guns are my main concern. I'm happy enough with the way it's set up. Is cannons not half bad, but my main concern is guns. Like, the guns really need to be more useful than they actually are. Now, the battleship guns are pretty... They're, they do a hefty amount of damage to cruisers, but they don't do enough to battleships. That's, my con that's the main issue with them. So you could get quite a bit of damage with them, but not enough, <laughs> Sad, sadly. Yeah, more containers off the Bismarck type. No, not Bismarck, uh, Duke of York. Oh, what's, what logo is that? Badges of the Samurais. Right. You must get so many duplicates here. Wait, two Christmas containers? Where did I get these from? Oh, jibloons. And another Christmas container? Don't remember ever buying anymore, but okay. Apparently got another two there. No idea how though. Oh, 10k free XP. Apparently I've got one more container. As you see, they just like, I don't know if that was a glitch that happened there or. I have no idea what happened there. But by the looks of it, I just completed that collection. And got New Mexico. But didn't get, but I didn't actually get New Mexico. Uh, 
Snowy new max camo. New year camo, no idea what. Oh, first blood. So I pretty much got new max gun. I got converted into credits by the looks of it. And I got the snowy New Mexico camouflage for it. Which seems to be pretty which I'm guessing is new. I haven't actually looked at it. Whoops. They meant to, they mean to do that there. Anyways. Quick look over the stats near the end. I'll show you what I mean. The concealment, 14.1 kilometers. I'm hoping to get that down to about 12 with the concealment expert. And I hope the well concealment expert here, I'm hoping to bring it down to about 12 with that there. With the advanced firing training, 87 AA rating, making it the best AA, AA, well, one of the best in its Terra AA defense, other than the HMS Hood with its, def its defensive AA, which is outstanding. But the only issue is that there's very short, it's only about 40 50 seconds, if I remember correctly, so this is more of a permanent AA buff, really. The only other issue with this AA is it's pretty undefended, so you really need to have, or what you call it, uh, survive the auxiliary armaments that increase their survivability as they do get knocked out very easily, as you'll notice on the Conqueror as well. It's got amazing AA, like 800 damage a second, but as soon as you start getting hit by a high explosive, they start getting knocked out really, really quickly. Or when they get a really good high explosive bombing raid on you, you lose a lot of your armaments very quickly. Now, it's got 39 times 120 mils. That's a lot of 20 millimeters. It's got 8 times dual 20 millimeters, 2 times 40 mil boffers. Bit surprised they didn't put more boffers on it than they did pom poms. It's got 6 times quad pom poms and 8 times 8 pom poms, so quite a bit of damage that way. And it's got its 8 dual 134s with 78 damage on average and 5.4 kilometers. 190 on the pom poms, 93 on the, on the quad pom poms, 38 on the boffers. And the Arcolians make up about 220 between all of them. So its AA is pretty solid, so it's not too bad that way. Its secondary range is 5 kilometers, 7.5% chance of fire, so you could cause a few fires if you managed to get into that close range of a fight, but you shouldn't really be getting into that close of a range of a fight in this ship. It should be maybe about 11 to 12 kilometers maximum away from someone. Uh, that, that's how far away you need to stay with the ship about 11 kilometers roughly as you can see reload times 29.5 seconds which isn't that good to be honest with you you can get the fire up to about 40 percent again with the demolition expert so you get about 40 percent fire chance which is not half bad 18.1 kilometer range guns not too bad but it's got very very slow shelf velocity so your best bet is he at this point and trying to land them on the deck armor and getting fire damage really other than that there, the actual armor piercing is pretty poor. And as you notice as well with the guns, the actual dispersion can be pretty poor as well with them. Anyways, final decision of the ship. It's great for a free premium ship. It can be a nice credit earner, but the issue is with it, it's not worth the money you pay for it. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.